If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to answer part A of the question, we want to look at the diagram carefully and notice that a Y as well as X axes have been drawn on this picture. And so when we are asked what are the coordinates of the initial position, we need to come up here where the person is standing and just note what the X and Y coordinates of that point would be. Hopefully we can see from the diagram that the initial X coordinate of this stone is equal to zero meters and the initial Y coordinate is equal to 50 meters, which is essentially the height of the cliff. And so these coordinates would represent the answer to part A. For part B, the components of the initial velocity, we have to note that the stone is thrown horizontally as noted in the question. Well, that means that the motion of the stone is exclusively in the x direction or horizontal direction. So that means that the initial velocity in the x direction will be the positive 18 meters per second. In the y direction, however, the initial velocity will be zero. And that's because the stone is not moving in the y direction initially. So this would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, in order to write the x component of the velocity, we can consider the following equation from kinematics. Now in the x direction, we simply have to note that the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared. And that is always going to be true for a basic projectile motion. Since the ax term is zero, that will eliminate this entire term from the equation. And so the equation simplifies to this. Now we noted already that the initial velocity in the x direction was the positive 18 meters per second. And so the correct answer to part C for the x component is right here. Now for the y component, we can use the same equation. Let's not forget that the initial velocity in the y direction was equal to zero meters per second. So that's going to eliminate this term from the equation. Now, in the y direction, the acceleration is certainly not zero. Because of the influence of gravity, there is indeed an acceleration, and it's equivalent to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we would have to multiply that acceleration by the time t. And so this would be the equation for the y component of the velocity. For part d, in order to write the equation for the position of the stone with time, we would consider this equation from kinematics. Now in this equation, we can simplify a couple of the terms. Remember, the initial x position was zero. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. So that's going to wipe out this term as well as this term. And then once again, we're going to plug in the initial velocity in the x direction, which was that positive 18 meters per second. And so this will represent the equation for the position in the horizontal or x direction as a function of time. So we can move over to the y direction. Remember the initial velocity was zero, so that knocks out this term. And then we can plug in the initial position, which was the positive 50 meters, as well as the acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice that we can simplify the equation by multiplying the positive 1 half by the negative 9.8. And so this equation would represent the position in the y direction as a function of time. And in fact, we can use this equation to solve part E, which asks how long after being released does the stone strike the beach below the cliff? So anytime we see the question how long, of course, we're being asked to calculate the time t. Now notice when the stone strikes the beach, it's going to end up right down here. And you'll notice that the final y position right there is equal to zero meters. So we're going to plug in zero meters in for the final y position and then try to solve for the time. So we've omitted the units just for the sake of clarity. Let's go ahead and add the 4.9t squared over to the left side. We could then divide both sides by 4.9. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we can see that the time is approximately 3.19 seconds. So this is the correct answer to part E. Now, for part F, it turns out we can use this time to calculate the speed. Let's bring back the equations that we had developed earlier in part C of the question. Now, the final speed in the 
X direction is a constant 18 meters per second, but the final speed in the Y direction needs to be calculated using this equation. So we'll go ahead and plug 3.19 seconds in for the time T. And when we calculate that, we get approximately negative 31.3 meters per second. Now, what we have to understand is the directions of this velocity as well as this velocity. We can come over here and draw a picture. The velocity in the X direction is positive and is therefore pointing to the right. And we can label that as being 18 meters per second. The velocity in the Y direction is negative and is therefore pointing down. And it has a magnitude of 31.3 meters per second. To get the overall velocity, we simply look for the resultant or the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We can perhaps label it R for resultant. We'll then use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have the hypotenuse squared equaling the sum of the other two sides squared. We'll go ahead and square root both sides to get R, and we would get 36.1 meters per second. So this represents the speed of the stone at impact, but what we are also asked to find is the angle. Well, notice from this right triangle that we have the opposite as well as adjacent side of the triangle labeled. We know that the tangent of an angle, of a angle in a right triangle, is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. That means that the angle itself will be the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. And so all we have to do is plug in the opposite side of 31.3 and then the adjacent side of 18, and this will give us the angle, which turns out to be roughly 60.1 degrees. Notice that the angle is pointing below the horizontal. If we call this line right here the horizontal, the angle that we drew is pointing below the horizontal. So we can say 60.1 degrees below the horizontal as the final direction of the stone at impact. So here is the direction, and again, here is the speed. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for other videos. Remember that you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.